Welcome to another episode of the 10 Minute Land Surveyor. I'm Dave Woolley. Today I'm going to be talking about multiple monuments that were set to represent one corner. This is commonly referred to as a pin cushion. In talking about the pin cushion, I'm going to talk about some of the downsides, the causes, and some of the cures. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, Jeff Lucas wrote a book, The Pin Cushion Effect. I recommend this book to any, any surveyor uh, interested in the practice of land surveying. I'm going to show you a couple photos here of what, it, what a pin cushion is if you're, if you're unacquainted. Uh, on the screen here, you'll see that we have uh, a rebar and a rebar with a plastic cap here. Uh, and you can tell by the width, they're, they're less than a tenth apart. In the photo on the right, we have three pipes and presumably a rebar and a cap here. So we have four monuments to represent that corner. That is a pin cushion. Now, if you're a landowner, which one do you rely on? Which one is the actual corner and what does it matter? Well, it's embarrassing for us as a profession to have multiple monuments set for to represent a single corner. Uh, if you're building a fence, fence, which one do you build to? How were these monuments set? Uh, were they set with RTK? Uh, RTK isn't even accurate enough to set those monuments that close within themselves. And what happened to the fact that monuments hold over math, monuments hold over maps? Why are we setting multiple monuments? Let's go to another photo. Here you go. Two monuments with flagging uh, available, uh, to, close enough to tie the two together. In this photo, you can see one, two, three, four monuments shown with, based on the size of that post, probably within about an 18 inch radius. And you tell me, how does that protect the public? How does that represent the corner? I don't know the particulars on these, uh, these surveys, but I do know that there shouldn't be multiple monuments representing a single corner. And I have one more photo before we go into this. In this particular photo, you'll see a rebar here and you'll see a plastic cap here. I'm guessing that that's about two tenths distance. And then here you have a two iron pipe that were set to represent the same corner. Well, this is embarrassing for our profession, as I said, I can't imagine. Now you say, how does this come about or how does, how does this uh, happen? Well, several states, not California, require that when you do a, a field survey that you monument the parcel. So when you do the monumentation, according to the state law, if there's an existing monument, well, you end up setting your monument next to it. Now, why you don't accept those monuments or, or what that is, I don't know. Uh, each survey is individual and different. But when you set a monument, uh, next to a monument, it's potentially going to create confusion. And imagine if you had a monument that was existing, but your math didn't uh, support that, but that monument had been there for some time and somebody had built improvements to that monument. That monument uh, becomes much more important than the math that was used to set it. And every surveyor should understand that. And if you look at, uh, this is a standard that was written. Uh, this is a standard for the uh, Orange County uh, subdivision manual. And what they say here is they say that when a boundary monument is found out of position and a new monument should be placed at the proper position, if by doing so the found monument is not disturbed. If the monument cannot be set without disturbing the old one, an offset may be set. Monuments out of position shall be shown accented, accentuated in scale on the map and it goes on to talk about the details and how you uh, how you would show a monument off. Calling monuments off is is quite common and in some instances it's appropriate. Uh, if you have a monument that extends out into the public right-of-way and the public right-of-way is senior, if you have a monument that extends over into a uh, senior parcel and you're the junior parcel, you would call that monument off uh, appropriately. When you set a monument though, do you think the average layperson knows the difference between those two monuments? When you set a monument, is it a tenth away or is it several feet away? These are all factors. So what, how do we prevent the pincushion effect? Well, the first and foremost, accept as many monuments as can reasonably be uh, proven to be reasonable to the time that they were set and, and to the value of the land at the time they were set. 
Just because it doesn't fit the math doesn't mean it doesn't mark the corner. This is in line with following in the footsteps of the uh, surveyor before you. Uh, no reference monuments generally don't have that, uh, you don't, do not afford them that respect, but uh, it depends on the nature of the monument again and, and the, the factors. Now, here's the part where a lot of people are going to fall out of their chair. I would say that in many instances, if you have an, uh, a situation where you're going to have two monuments set, you remove the monument that you're not accepting. And that's sacrilege to many people. But I would say, which protects the public more? Think about it. I have two monuments to represent one corner. They're going to build a fence. And which one do they build to? The one that's most to their advantage or the one that is least to their advantage? And just out of simple confusion. So the public's not protected. If there exists only one monument, because I removed the other monument, that better protects the public. I do have an obligation to document that monument and to document the location of that monument and to file a map showing the relationship of the monument that I removed. But I believe it better protects the public. Let's talk about that a little bit more. California Business and Professions Code, Section 8725, Necessity of a License. And if you read what it says, it says it's unlawful for any person to practice or office to practice, so on and so forth. And then it says, to set, reset, replace, or remove any survey monument on land in which he or she has no legal interest unless he or she has been licensed or specifically exempted from licensing under this chapter. So what it says there is if you're a licensed land surveyor, you have the authority to remove monuments. Well, you say, well, I don't know about that. Well, let's, let's look at when I talked earlier about the obligation, legal obligation, statutory obligation to... Uh, make a record of that, let's go to section 8764, uh, items shown on a record of survey, and this is section A. All monuments found, set, reset, replaced, or removed, describing their kind, size, and location, and giving other data relating, relating thereto. Well, there it is, replaced or removed, and I'm obligated statutorily to show that I removed that monument and there's no reason you can't remove a monument. I would, I would hope that you're a, a, a good conscientious land surveyor and that when you do this, you, uh, you do you very carefully. You don't do it willy-nilly and, and you make a good record of it and you file that record. Uh, now, removing monuments is not without its peril. Uh, several years ago, probably four or five years ago, I was actually sued for removing monuments, uh, both as an individual and as a company, and uh, so was my client. Uh, we, were, we were all sued. Uh, we were all in litigation to begin with. So what they did is they, they sued me for various things, but they, they said that I messed up the entire neighborhood by removing monuments and replacing monuments in different locations. Uh, and they were trying to get a class action lawsuit that would bring the neighbors in uh, on this action. Of course, it, it didn't go anywhere. And uh, turned out that uh, I, I was an expert in that case, and I had recovered original monuments dating back to the 30s and mostly in the 40s. And some donkey had went in there in the early 90s, did a two-monument tango. The two monuments that he used to establish the boundary had moved, and I was able to figure out that they had moved when the city had uh, done a, a large overlay project, they had moved those monuments about a half a foot. So it was record between the two well monuments, but they were half a foot off of the block. So I found, I surveyed like three blocks, found a number of original monuments, recreated everything, and I was able to prove that from 91, 92, whenever that map came through, that there was a series of mistakes and some other surveyors, not uh, being diligent, had piggybacked onto this improper survey in the early 90s and, and made the problem worse over time, but found original monuments or their locations holds. And that's what I did. It took a lot of work, but I got it done. Now, these other surveyors would occasionally find these original monuments that were out there because I found them and they didn't fit by, you know, half a foot. So they ignored them. 
and because it was so much easier just to piggyback on the most recent records. So anyway, I was sued. It ended up costing the guy who sued me uh, $71,000 in legal fees to uh, pay my legal fees and my client's legal fees. And he was literally crying uh, in court, telling the judge that he, he couldn't afford to pay this. The judge had very little compassion for his situation for suing me. So yes, uh, it, it, there are some downsides to removing monuments, but I would do it again. And I was turned into the licensing board for this also. They, they, uh, they, they turned me in the licensing board and said that I was, uh, I had you know, removed these monuments and that I should be uh, subject to discipline. And you'll see on the screen here the letter. And if you can't read the letter, what the letter says is that you were turned in for removing monuments. We've uh, done an investigation and determined that you did not violate any of the board's laws. The enforcement unit has now closed the case. So our licensing board recognizes and reads the law in plain language like anybody else, and you can remove monuments. So in closing, do not honor a pin cushion. Do not create a pin cushion. Uh, feel free to remove monuments, uh, but be very, very careful. Check which directions you call those monuments off because those positions should be able to be recreated from your monument position. Understand that there's a, there's a much higher obligation if this is the route you're gonna choose, but this will do away with the pin cushion. The pin cushion damages the public and it's embarrassing. So put away your clown shoes, pack away your mini bike, grab your crowbar and start removing monuments. Thank you and have a nice day.